Hosting your website isn't always straightforward and having each user have his own subdomain is not as easy either. So in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how you can host your Next.js website with subdomains and how you can put it all together using AWS Amplify hosting. And I really think this is the first step when you're creating a more of a complicated SaaS app. So I just wanna show you this first step and show you how it works. So leave a comment below if you like videos like this where I explain these concepts and how to use different types of hosting providers. I think this is a fundamental step whenever you're creating a website. So let's take a look. I'm gonna start by creating a brand new Next app. I'll do at latest. And this will just be for the subdomain project. So I'm gonna call it subdomains and I'll choose all the defaults. Okay, so I'm gonna change directories into it and we open up in the same window. And we'll see it's just a normal uh, Next14 app. I'm just gonna do a hello world from root. Okay, so inside my app folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called users, and then I have one called username, and then I'm gonna create my page.tsx file. And inside here is where I'm going to have users, if they go to a subnet domain, they're gonna be, the URL is gonna be rewritten, and it's gonna go into this user page.tsx file. So let's let's just see if we can do a simple message on here. So I'm gonna import headers from next headers. And let's just default a, well, we'll just default a function here. We'll call it users. And we'll call a header list headers. And we'll have a host name equals header list dot git and we'll get the host. And so this should get the domain name we're on. And then I'm just gonna return an h1 hello from subdomain host name here. And I always like to do a little cleanup too. Uh, so let's open up our CSS and I'll delete all this out of it. We don't have too much here. So let's run npm run dev and take a look what it looks like. Okay, so here it is, hello from root, not anything too special. So our idea would be is when you go to a subdomain, uh, blah.subdomain, that it would then work for you. So right now it's, it's obviously not doing anything. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add in a new file. So inside the source folder, I'm gonna create a new file called middleware.ts. And this file is where we're gonna do a little bit of rewriting of some rules. So to do that, I'm gonna copy this from my other screen, It'd be a little easier. I'm gonna paste it in and I'll show you what I'm, I've done. So this right here at the top for a middleware, it tells it which routes that this will uh, match on. So it'll match on everything except these paths. So we have API, next, static. So it won't uh, match on any of those paths. So obviously we don't want someone to match an API route. And then I'm doing a little bit of magic here where I'm grabbing the URL, I'm grabbing that he those headers again, and then I'm grabbing the subdomain. And what I'm doing is if it's local host, then I'm just replacing it with nothing. So in, in this, if you're just on local host 3000, that's what this subdomain will be, or this domain will be, and so it'll replace it with nothing. So I'm saying if it's www or nothing, just go to the next response. I can delete that here. Uh, otherwise, if it's not app, so this would be whatever our domain name is, then it's going to rewrite the URL. So it's gonna look at users and then the subdomain, and it's going to uh, route to that. And that should be everything we need to get this working. And otherwise, if all else fails, it just goes to the next one. So we could try to test locally. So after we add that in here, you see now we have hello from subdomain, blah at localhost.3000. One thing I like to do occasionally too when I'm testing subdomains is there's an Etsy hosts file. If you're on a Windows or Mac machine, I, I believe in Windows it's in a different location, but there is a host file. And what I can do here is I can add in some, uh, I can add in some redirects. So in this case, I can make my own domain called like eric-dev and I can add it to the host file and I can have it redirect to 127.0.1. And that kind of helps me when I'm just playing around with domain names. So just a little tip there if you guys need to do that. So the next thing we're gonna do is make sure that we have this in GitHub. 
And then from here, I'm gonna choose Eric. I'm gonna call it Wild Card YouTube. Well, you know, I'll make it public, so I'll put it in this video. Create repository. And then one thing I'd like to do is I'll just commit all this. First commit. So let's just copy and paste this. And that should add and push everything to main now. Cool. So if we refresh this right here, now we have our app, I uh, have our middleware and should be good. So now I wanna go into the Amplify console and I'm just going to type in AWS Amplify. Go to AWS Amplify here. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna stick to US East one. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna do new app and do host web app. By the way, if you are already know a little bit about Amplify. We just released this new Gen 2 feature, which is a really neat way to create your back end and front end. It sort of reminds me of CDK and SST. Uh, I won't be showing you that today because it doesn't support custom domains. And that's one thing you'll need to do to use this feature today. So I'm gonna do host web app. It will in the future, by the way, it's just in developer preview. But this one is not in developer preview. Hosting has been a while around for a while. Do GitHub here. And it should automatically connect to my GitHub. So if this is the first time doing it, it'll pop up with a screen that asks you to uh, set your authorization for GitHub. I already did that beforehand. And now I can check my wildcard YouTube. I'm gonna do main. I'll click next. Now it's gonna auto detect everything you need for your build settings. One thing you will have to take a look at though is the build image itself. So since we're using Next 14, it as of this recording, it doesn't automatically detect Next 14 and it puts you in a build image that's not gonna work, work right. So to do this correct, you need to type in, and you can do this afterwards too, amplify and then a colon AL223. And this will give you the latest Linux image that will work with Next 14. So it's amplify colon AL2023. I'm going to leave everything else. I don't have any environmental variables or anything like that. So I'm going to click next and we'll click save and deploy. And what this is going to do is it's going to deploy it. But after this, we're going to use a custom domain so we can look at these wildcard domains and see how that'll work. So let's just take a moment. And on this screen right here, you see it's provisioning, building, deploying, everything like that. While it's doing this, uh, we're gonna click on domain management and click on add domain. So I can click, uh, I can. I bought this domain recently, tanoak.link. It's a, tan oak is a type of tree. And then we'll click configure domain. And I'm gonna have it, uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have it www.tanoak.link. We'll go to the main branch you can do uh, a star, so everything else will also go to the main. And then I'll do redirects from uh, tanoak.link to www.tanoak.link. And if I bought this domain through Route 53, but if you didn't, you can just type in a domain here and it'll give you instructions of how you can go into your registrar and configure it so it'll work with this, uh, with Amplify hosting. So I'm gonna click save here. And so right now it's going to set up the SSL and configure it all for us. Uh, you can look into, so this will just take a, a few moments adding the certificate and everything. Uh, and then in a moment, we'll be able to take a look at it. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and you see the SSL is now configured. Now it's in this domain activation. So if we click uh, actions here, view DNS records, if we had this domain not on route 53, we can, it'll give you some instructions to add a C name but it should it automatically added it for us, so we don't need to do that. But this does sometimes take up to 24 hours for it to work. So I'll just fast forward through that to see if it activates on this app. You could see also, if we go back to Wildcard uh, YouTube here, that it set up this kind of this fake website for us, this kind of test domain for us to test it out. It did the um, provision build and deploy, so that's all set up. And it is now connected to our GitHub, so anytime we push changes to main and it gets uh, committed, it will automatically trigger a new build, which is uh, really handy. But if we click here, 
we can see here is the domain. It thinks that this main here is actually is a subdomain. So this is the subdomain look and feel, but let's see if we can look at it on Tan Oak here in a second. So from the power of editing, we're gonna show you what that'll look like. All right, so now if we look here, it says it is now available. Uh, everything is matched up for our tanoak.link. If we go back to wildcard subdomain here, now we have the new URL here, tanoak.link. So let's click on it. It's gonna go ahead and bring up the website. I believe it will show you, yep, hello world from root. Now let's try a different subdomain. So let's assume like, let's say we have Eric here, eric.tanoak.link. Cool. So you can see here, it went ahead and redirected to that eric.tanoak.link, which is showing basically what's in the user's route that we set up earlier. I think this is really powerful having subdomains. Uh, in a next video, I can go deeper into this. One thing that I've heard from people too is,